All right, what is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jason Marcus and this is the second half of part two. Um, so actually I, I ended up waking up this morning and I went to edit my video and I realized that I had actually deleted um, a couple of my videos that were being that were being stored in my phone and I had actually permanently deleted them and the second half of last week's video was one of those videos that ended up getting deleted um, yeah so I'm remaking this again which is totally fine because honestly the audio on the last um, half of that clip was really bad like it was really hard to hear me so anyways yeah, I think we left off um, on, I think, the third reason why I continued to stay off of testosterone. Um, so this is something that, you know, a lot of, well, I, I don't know if I would say a lot, um, but there's definitely, this does happen where, um, especially for, I think, I mean, I don't want to speak for trans women because I don't know. But for trans, trans men, this does happen where, um, you know, people will start their transition, their physical transition, go on hormones, have surgery, whatever, um, and then they'll find that their sexuality has shifted. Um, or, I mean, you could say the, inv the, the position that they find themselves in now, um, maybe makes them more comfortable in, you know, being willing to explore their sexuality a little bit more because they're now in a body that they feel comfortable in. But yeah, so anyways, that does tend to happen a lot where like, you know, trans men will be like, you know, for example, primarily attracted to, uh, you know, women prior to starting testosterone and then after being attracted to, you know, maybe men and women or, you know, having some curiosity about men or, you know. So for me, that's something that definitely happened um, and definitely came up. And I was like, you know, this is something that I, you know, I need to think about um, because it was, I think it was definitely not expected. Um, I, you know, I didn't expect there to be those feelings and then they were there. And so, yeah. Um, so those, those feelings started to come up at the time I, I was in a relationship, and this is definitely not something that I suggest at all. Um, I, you know, I never think that cheating or, you know, being dishonest about, you know, what you're doing in any type of relationship is okay. Um, but this is, this is what happens. So I was currently in a relationship at that time, and, um, you know, I was having these feelings, and I... I guess, you know, looking back, I guess I was maybe embarrassed and, like, didn't really know how to communicate those feelings because of my own personal embarrassment. Um, so what I ended up doing was I ended up actually cheating and going behind my girlfriend's back and, like, experimenting on the side um, and honestly just being really unsafe, you know, in the way that I was doing it. You know, I was... Uh, you know, having random hookups with people on Craigslist, um, through Grindr, and, um, just, you know, not being safe. You know, I don't think those things are necessarily bad, but, you know, I know for, you know, trans people, you know, that kind of, just, you know, really, I don't know, I feel like just anybody, you have to be safe because, you know, you can end up putting yourself in a situation where you get hurt. And, you know, that wasn't really something that was on my mind. It was just more like I need to explore these feelings. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I was just really being unsafe and stuff. And, um, yeah, so that was something that I think was surprising that I didn't expect and something that I, you know, wanted to... Um, take my time to think about and um, just I don't even know how to explain it uh, yeah I, I guess just take my time 
to explore these feelings, especially because, you know, it kind of confused my head with... It just, I don't know, it confused me. But, so I did that. Um, and, you know, my, my sexuality now is pretty... You know, I would consider myself to be a pretty fluid person. You know, I, I don't like to... I really don't like labels at all. I mean, I think, you know, things happen that are unexpected where, you know, feelings for certain people that, you know, you maybe didn't expect happen. So for me now, based on my sexuality, I just, you know, I'm like, I don't care, <laughs> I guess. Anyways, so no, the last reason why I stopped and stayed off of tea um, is similar to kind of sexuality and just kind of getting thrown off by certain things is detransitioning. Um, and this was something that I actually didn't really hear about until more recently. Um, and if you guys don't know what detransitioning is, detransitioning is when a trans person transitions, whether that's physically or socially, most of the time it's, you know, both. And, you know, they get to a later date where they're like, or I guess it's, it doesn't have to be both. It could be social or a physical transition. They get, and anyways, they get to a date where they, re, they get to a point where they realize, you know what, I think I made a mistake. I don't think I'm actually trans and I want to go back to the gender that I was assigned to at birth. And, um, so yeah, I definitely didn't like hear about detransitioning and anybody detransitioning until recently and I think there are a lot of reasons why you know the numbers of people the number of people detransitioning is increasing I'm not going to get too deep into that I think it's you know due to a lot of um, different reasons but I think hearing about people who were like on T for like 15 to 20 years and then sudden suddenly had this like switch around where they were like you know I don't think I was actually trans and I want to transition or detransition for me I don't know that kind of like made me nervous because it's like you could just like I could be on T for like you know 10 to 15 years and then all of a sudden have this realization that I made a mistake and I mean I don't think anybody wants to ever really think that they made a mistake especially with something so you know deep and important and so I guess hearing more and more about detransitioning stories was like made me stop and think like about certain things because most of the reasons why you know people decide to detransition is because they confuse their you know their gender dysphoria um with you know something else um you know whether that is trauma related, um, whether that has to do with an eating disordia, disordia, disor disorder or um, a body image disorder. Um, sometimes those things can, there's, uh, there's a lot of overlap between some of those categories and it can confuse people um, to the point where they, you know, might think they're trans. Um, and so for me, you know, I didn't necessarily think this, but I was like, okay, is there anything in my life that I need to look at and that I need to work through um, right now? Um, if, I don't know, I guess just in case I were ever to get to that point where I was like, this isn't correct. I mean, I would hope if, you know, I felt like something wasn't correct, I would hope that I would figure, figure it out sooner than later. Um, so I just kind of wanted to take my time to think about that and think about some of the things that have happened in my life that could be, I don't know, needed to be worked through and, you know, and I guess hoping that, you know, I, if, if there was any part that was confusing any of those things with gender dysphoria that I would be able to see those and work through those, I guess. I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> I think I just confused myself. Yeah, that's basically it. This video is uh, 
getting kind of long. So, yeah, um, thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys understood. I don't even know, um, but I appreciate I appreciate you guys listening and. Yeah, I hope you guys are having a great a great day and I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Peace.